there YouTube, welcome on back to our Choke Dip. My name is Rob, Solo Tabletop Gamer. And as you notice from the introduction of this video, um, so I've taken a little bit of a short break. I've been working on some new gaming tracks, uh, music tracks that I'm putting together. And once I get those done, I haven't decided yet how I wanna do that, if I'm gonna release it all in an MP3 or in a YouTube video. Once I get to that and I get closer to completion of that project, I will let you know. But before I get into the video, if you like this video, please click the like button. If you have not subscribed, click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon. And every time I upload a video, you'll get notified so you don't miss one. And if you share the video so other solo enthusiasts out there can be able to see my content and learn how to solo RPG, send me a comment and um, well, what I'll do is I will uh, send you something. All right, so if you notice at the end of the intro, there was the Artichoke Dip banner, and I had put that up on the Facebook page. If you're not part of the Facebook page, I'll leave a link in the description below, and at that point, you can go there, answer a few questions, come on in, and see what other solo RPG players are doing. But this is about a special shout-out to a subscriber of mine, and also a Facebook friend. It goes by the name of Radwin Shadowstar. And he actually does this for a living. He makes these images for websites and so on and so forth. And he said, hey, I wanna do this for you. I wanna do something really cool for you. And he had made that for me. And thank you so much. And game on, my friend. I'm glad to have you as a subscriber and a friend. And thank you very much. I figured I would roll that out officially like that on the YouTube channel with a uh, pretty cool introduction in my opinion but hey that's my opinion so of course the, um, the track that you heard in the beginning is a little taste of what I'm working on not all of it but that was one of the things I came up with but enough of that let's move on with the video so in this video what I'm going to talk about because I know a lot of you are waiting to see my Ravenloft Castles and Crusades I have not started that game yet I wrote up the backstory got the characters together got everything done um, it was at that point I had some new hardware that I had ordered show up a new recording interface and I was learning how to use that and more and less taking some of these ideas I had and working on that so I decided to put that aside for right now take a little break from gaming work on that and I will be getting into that and doing them videos because I'm ready to jump back into gaming but what this break did for me is it was a good thing because it gave me time to really reflect and think about the game systems I find myself personally going back to that I really enjoy, why I enjoy them, what's so different about them that makes them enjoyable, and maybe for some of you out there just getting into this, some of these game systems you never heard of before that are well worth checking out and maybe bringing to your game table, and well, we'll go from there. A couple of friends of mine um, that I talk to on a regular basis that I've met through YouTube that have become friends of mine. One of them, Lance Addington, um, down there in Texas. Special shout out. Um, he's doing good. Um, he did send me a text saying, you know, in all your videos, when you talk about it in the winter time, there's not a whole lot to do. This is why I do gaming in the winter time. And he's like, dude, I get it now. I totally get it now. So, yeah, um, and my other friend, Trevor Green, who um, is down there in Alabama, and special shout out to him as well. And um, so I've been talking with both of them and getting unique perspectives, and it gave me time to kind of reflect and think about some of these game systems and what I like about them and what I like solo about them. And I wanted to share that with you. Maybe you're have the same perspective as I do maybe if you have just now gotten into RPG gaming okay and during the pandemic a lot of people got into playing D&D &D and doing stuff like that they were you know at home there's not a whole lot to do and they discovered it maybe they found my channel or the solo RPG guy or quest wise or 
all these other gaming channels out there and they got an introduction to it and they're like hey this is really cool now of course i'm guessing the game that they've been introduced to which is what i like to refer to as the gateway to tabletop rpgs which is dungeons and dragons right and right now dungeons and dragons has just completely dominated the marketplace now there's good points and bad points in to any game system but the thing about fifth edition that i really really have been noticing and my friend trevor brought this up and he said the thing i don't like about it and it's true is he says it's pay to play and what i mean by that is if you ever notice the way that they set the system up so you go out and you buy your main core rule books but then they come out with this campaign setting so you buy that and that's another what, 40 50 bucks for that campaign setting but then they offer all these dungeon tiles for it which is going to cost more money and then of course minis that they created just for that scenario more money and then it just keeps going on from there so it's almost like how good of a game experience do you want you pay to play and i feel as if particularly for the solo rpg player and even if you're playing in a group you're a dungeon master game master however you refer to yourself watching this and i think you can also agree that there's at one point where you want something that's simple what about if you could have something that's contained to one book but would give you everything and you wouldn't have to keep at that point purchasing to keep expanding and playing you could just have that one book and go back to it and have fun with that system as the way it was written and that's what i'm going to talk about today i decided to pull together the games that i found that I keep going back to and I really, really do enjoy. Now one thing I am going to get out there, my favorite type of gaming is medieval fantasy. So I know a lot of people have said in the past, hey, you don't ever have anything sci-fi. Well, it's true. Um, I like sword and sorcery more so than I do sci-fi. Now don't get me wrong, um, I love Star Wars, you know, but when it comes to my tabletop gaming, I like Sword and Sorcery more. So with that in mind, let's jump into this and let's talk about this a little bit. So the first game system I'm going to talk about is extremely simple. It's extremely cheap. Um, it It's basically about five bucks. And if you're just getting into solo RPG and you're looking for somewhere to start, or perhaps you're maybe noticed that you played some RPGs and you kind of like the miniature side of it, the more tactical side of that game. This game might be right up your alley. It's very cheap, but it'll run you about five to seven bucks, depending on where you pick it up at. And that game is called Four Against Darkness. Now, Four Against Darkness is what you make of it. At its very core, it's an old school dungeon crawler. Everything takes place in a dungeon and you just keep going down the levels of dungeons and as you level up, the encounters get tougher, the rewards get better, but all in all, it's just a dungeon crawler. But don't let that scare you away, particularly if you're new into solo RPG, because the cool thing about it is it's very simple. The characters take you a few minutes to create and you really don't need a whole lot. Matter of fact, you just need a piece of paper to keep track of your character information, characters, I'm sorry, because you start out with four, and some graph paper to keep track of your dungeon. And moving on from there, if you wanted to get more elaborate, you really wouldn't have to break the bank. As a matter of fact, it gives you a dungeon generator in here Let me get to that page to show you what I'm talking about. How it generates your dungeons by numbers using two six-sided dice. 
So you'd roll one and that would be your tens and your other ones would be your one. So if you roll two ones, you would come up with an 11, like as it shows right here. But the point I'm getting at is you could take these basic shapes, you could go get yourself some cheap foam board, a ruler, a pencil, draw it out and cut them. And you could make these if you wanted to very cheap dungeon tiles that you could use for this, or you could just buy pre-made dungeon tiles and use them as well. That's all up to you, however you wanted to do it. But the simplicity of the game is the fact that every time you sit down and play it, it's different every single time. Everything goes back to a percentile system, generating a dungeon that's never gonna be the same twice, and your characters move through it, and it gives you hours of fun doing that. Now, when it comes to the RPG or the role-playing game element, it does lack quite a bit there. If you're looking for a game that has a very immersive story to where you can really get into character creation, you can really develop some um, cool ideas for your characters, For Against Darkness is not going to be the game. For Against Darkness is more of how I like to explain it, a tactical miniature skirmish dungeon crawl game is what it is. And for you veteran gamers out there, if you're looking for something to be able to pull the miniatures out, get some tiles out and play through some scenarios, you'll probably find this very interesting to use it for that. But if you've been doing solo RPG for any amount of time, I would have to imagine besides the dungeon generator out of here, you probably have more elaborate randomized tables in your own library than what you're gonna find in here. Which is why I say this is really good for the beginner beginner. And, but with that being said, this is a game that I like to pull out when I don't wanna play an RPG. But I wanna kick some minis around the board. I wanna play some miniature skirmish and some scenarios and I wanna have that level of not knowing what's in the room and leaving it to the tables. This game really works out well. I really do enjoy it for what it is. It's a cool game and it's a cool game solo. And it never gets, how do I put this, old. Now it's not a game that I would spend hours upon hours playing and devote an entire campaign to because, well, it's just not that in-depth of a storytelling game. It would more or less, well, leave me wanting more. But for what it is, the way I use it for miniatures, it's an awesome game system. Now, the next game I want to talk about and we're getting a little bit more um a little bit more advanced if you will moving through this and so for those of you just now getting into dnd i understand fifth edition's everywhere it's easy to get you can find it on amazon you can find it on ebay i mean heck i'm pretty sure you can walk into walmart target any of them and probably pretty much purchase the starting kit or the essential kit or all that so there's a large market for it out there that you're able to obtain these things unlike the days of old where you go to a gaming store and you'd walk in and there would be this large variety and sometimes some game systems you've never heard of where you've been like oh what's that looks pretty cool where you don't find that, but the older versions of D&D, if you have never experienced them and you, maybe you're only familiar with third edition moving forward and you've never played any of the older editions, I really urge you to try that. Now, trying to get your hands on an original copy of this, I'm not gonna say it can't be done because they can and that you're gonna pay you're gonna pay some money for it um the fact that a lot of people are hoarding this stuff some people don't want to sell what they have because they're still currently using it and they're enjoying it and the fact that well it came out in the 80s and well you know them copies have only survived for so long that well they're just getting harder to find but don't sweat it not at all is lost to history and time 
because the publisher Goblinoid Games, also known as Labyrinth Lord, which is one of my favorite old school renaissance or retro clone games, however you want to look at it, is the system I find myself going back to quite often. Now there's two different um, editions, if you will, put out by Goblinoid Games. The first one is right here, Labyrinth Lord. Labyrinth Lord is basic first edition, which is in fact just this. But the nice thing is, this is the entire game in one book. You have everything you need to play in this book. It goes through character creation, it gives you the tables, it gives you everything that you need just with this book. The only thing that you do need, well, are some dice. And heck, well, polyhedral dice sets, I mean, I never thought I would see the day that I could go to my local dollar store and, well, they'd sell polyhedral game dice sets, but yeah, they have them. I found them and yeah, I mean, I, who knew, who would have known? So at that point you can find them there. I mean, I've even seen polyhedral dice sets now at Walmart and Meyer and all these other places where I never thought I would see them, but you see them now. So getting the dice isn't an expensive or hard thing to do these days, but this system right here is old school. Now it's a little bit different than what you veteran gamers out there, those that are my same age bracket that grew up with this, you understand how this works. Unlike the more modern edition games to where you roll a 20 sider and then you take the bonuses and add it to the number and look at the AC to see if it is equal or exceeds that number to hit, this is a little bit different. At that point, you have to look at a chart that'll convert your character to the monster and it's going to give you a number to roll on the 20 sider to meet or exceed. Now there's a reason behind this because this style of RPG was a lot different than what we see today. The fact that characters start out extremely powerful, they have massive amounts of bonus, they have opportunities of attack and advantage or disadvantage and all these other things. Well, these older systems, combat wasn't always like that and combat could be downright lethal. And the dice didn't always fall the way you wanted them to, but the cool thing was character creation was very simple and you could whip out a character within about five minutes, 10 at the most, and you would have your character. So it all leveled itself out, unlike the modern RPG games to where you go to create a character, you may have an hour, two hours, three hours, or more invested in making one character, whereas with this, you did not have it. And I like that because I spend more time playing the game than I do creating a character. Creating a character has to be, in let me, in my opinion, has to be the most unenjoyable part of solo RPG. <laughs> the reason why I say that, and it shouldn't be. Uh, I'm not talking about the character backstory and all that stuff. That part I enjoy. The part I'm talking about is filling out the character sheet and then rolling the attributes and doing all that. That to me is just the... It's the part that I could do without, but it's a necessary part of the game. But this game, I have to say, if you're looking, if you're playing the newer editions of 5th edition and you're getting to that point where you're kind of like, okay, this is cool, but I want something different. I want something that gives me a little bit more freedom, something that I'm going to spend more time playing the game than I am chasing down rules or thumbing through supplemental books to look for an explanation for this particular um, skill or explanation of what this does, this game will deliver that for you and it'll do very well. As a matter of fact, Labyrinth Lord, the thing I like about it, you don't have races. So when you go to create your character, you just have classes. The classes are all basic. 
you have a cleric, you have a magic user, you have a fighter, which are all assumed to be human characters. Then you go into, you could be a halfling, you could be a dwarf, or an elf. And with all of those, say all the way they're set up have their perks and, well, let me put it in a better word. They all have their pros and cons, and it just all depends on what you decide to pick and how you put your party together as to whether you're going to succeed or fail. But that's part of the fun of it. But it's a very simple system, very simple to learn, and the nice thing is the entire game is in this right here. This is all you need to play this game, and it's well worth checking out. And that is Labyrinth Lord. And strongly urge you, if 5th uh, edition or 4th edition or 3rd edition is the only thing you've ever played and you've never played anything older, it's well worth checking out. And you may find you like the older editions more so than the newer ones. The next one I'm going to talk about that I find myself coming back to quite a bit and playing that I do enjoy more so than that, same thing, Goblinoid Games, but it's the Advanced Edition Companion. So this is, in fact, First Edition AD&D. Same thing. Um, everything is right here in this book that you need. All your encounters, everything that you have to know about this game system is in here. Now, I have to admit, if you want a better, more robust experience of Labyrinth Lord. You'll really want both books together. Um, and it's just going to give you more information, but you don't need them. If you want to play Advanced Edition, First Edition Advanced, I should say, D&D, &D, Old School Retro Clone, go with this one right here. And if you want to play the Basic Edition and just really get back to the bare bones of what D&D &D originally was meant to be and what it was. I'll go with Labyrinth Lord right here. Okay, I need to take a sip of Monster here. So, solo RPG. When I say solo, I mean simple. Where you can sit down and you can put your minis out or your tokens or whatever you're using on your board and set up your scenario to where you're spending more time playing the game and less time chasing through pages to find answers to questions or posed with the question to try to leave it down to a dice roll is this advantage or disadvantage or what's the dc of this or what's that or this or that and, that and all these other questions which you don't have it's very simplistic you also don't have to worry about attacks of opportunity because it does not exist in that game system. It's just a very, very cool old school RPG, the way it was meant to be and the way I like it. So that is, when it comes to my old school stuff, I find I go back to that quite often when I wanna get into older school RPG systems that I really enjoy. And the reason why I really enjoy it is for that fact. It's so simple. It's simple, cohesive. You can sit down and enjoy a game system the way it was intended to be. Now, moving on from there, the next game system I want to talk about that I find myself coming back to and I really do enjoy and it's very unique and there are some differences. Now it's a little bit more complex than basic or advanced D&D for the fact that it's more story driven. A lot goes into character creation in the world and a lot is left up to you to create it. So if you're the type of RPG player that you really enjoy the story, you really enjoy paying attention to the detail, every part of your world and creating that and being able to have that ability to create everything unlike what we see now in modern gaming to where here's this campaign setting, everything's set out for you, here's all the maps, this is the encounters, these are the NPCs, this is this, this is that. 
you're given the blank slate and at that point you have the white canvas and you have the easel in which it rests upon and you are the artist that has to paint the picture you'll enjoy this game and that is Palladium Fantasy Palladium Fantasy is a such a unique system I really really do enjoy it now it does utilize a polyhedral dice set but it weighs very heavily on percentile and using skills within this game system but don't let that scare you off because there are very stark differences between basic D&D and Palladium Fantasy. One of the things I want to get into that I enjoy about this system that I you don't won't find in D&D, even modern D&D, and that is the mindset behind, or not mindset, but the consideration of structural damage capacity is what they call it. And what that means is in a combat situation, you are left with a decision because your armor can only withstand so much damage. And after that, it's rendered useless. And then at that point, you don't have armor until you get it repaired. So you gotta make a decision. Are you going to parry this attack? Are you gonna to try to dodge? What are you going to do? Because if you rely on your armor all the time, like we would see in D&D, &D, and just take into account that your armor is infinitely pristine and never takes damage um, throughout your adventure, whereas this game system is a lot different and it really brings that into focus which also makes you think of combat and as you focus on the role playing and you do get into combat you have to be very very um you have to have a mindset of do i really want to get into the skirmish do i really want to get do this because I could potentially lose my armor. Now, depending on where you're at, if you're days away from civilization, your game, well, that could be a game changer, so to speak, no pun intended, right then and there. So it does present a very unique perspective to the game, regardless if you're playing in a large group or you're playing solo. It works either way. Structural damage capacity is one of the most unique things I have seen in this game system. Now the cool thing I have to admit about Palladium, Palladium, once you learn the basic system of Palladium, that system doesn't change from game system to game system, regardless if you're playing Rifts or you're playing Robotech or you're playing whatever you have you, you're playing of a Palladium um, product. The game basic rule sets apply for all of them. There's some minor tweaks, but if you're familiar with the basic rule set, it, they're not very hard to learn whatsoever. So, but the fact the thing I do really like about it is structural damage capacity it takes that into account another thing that it takes into account that you won't see in D and D, and it's very unique is the fact that it goes into these insanity tables and to give you an example so your character comes to the brink of death and your character so to speak is spiraling the drain and maybe getting ready to cross that tunnel from the physical world into the spirit realm but at the last moment your character is pulled back but when your character comes back he's he or she is not the same something has changed and it would be at that point you would have to roll on the insanity table and see what really affects them now this is the unique part about it that condition typically is permanent it doesn't go away and it alters the way that your character now reacts in to the world 
and the people within it which poses some very unique and um unique challenges i guess you could say particularly if you're playing in a large group the person creates their character and they have a mindset of how they see their character and how it interacts in this world and now after this life-changing event they may have Tourette's syndrome so now this quiet sneaky rogue is now at that point um just having outbursts of profanities everywhere it goes <laughs> and there's nothing that can you can do to change it so it gives you some very unique ideas and rules to play by in this game system the thing that i really do like too is the fact that the way that the combat does play out the fact that you can strike parry and or dodge and everything that comes in with that the battle and combat is very rich and very unique rather than just focusing on armor class and rolling damage and adding your bonus to it it's at that point you're giving more options as to what you can do and if you play solo and you've only been playing maybe D D or old, old osr old school revival or retro clone and you're looking for something maybe that's well a little more interesting for your gaming table give palladium fantasy a try give that a, a check out now this is the original edition um and they have updated that they have come out with a second edition which i do have somewhere over here on my shelf but i do enjoy the original very much and i find myself when i want to play palladium i keep coming back to this one right here okay so what's another game system artichoke that you have found that you like to use solo and you really do enjoy playing well the one game system i'm going to talk about which is going to be of no surprise to anybody which is this one right here rune quest rune quest is by far if you are playing solo and you want a system that is extremely how do i brutal extremely descriptive of what part of the body is damaged and mobilized and just adds more cinematic feel to combat and your overall rpg experience ruin quest is definitely for you and that's the way the game system is set up now the one thing about ruin quest is it takes place in the bronze age era now i've all the ruin quests i've played i've always played in that and most recently i did play a game setting to where i did use it in a fantasy medieval setting in the outskirts of the village of corwell and it worked out pretty decent um i had fun with it and um i have to admit you know like any rpg game what you put into it is what you get out and don't feel as if with any rpg game that what you read within these covers of this booklet is set in stone 100 percent when it comes to solo rpg or any type of system you're in if there's a rule set or there's something that you just don't like for whatever reason don't use it and if you have to have a rule try substituting a house rule that you make to make it fun to make it a fun experience for you because it's a solo experience it's about you it's not about sitting down at a large table with a group of people this is all solo so you can do what you want to do so just because you may like a particular um rule set i'm gonna say and it's set in a certain setting don't feel as if that's restricting change the setting to what you like and use the rule set in the game but ruin quest excellent game everything you need is within the pages of this book 
everything you need from your encounters, moving on to character creation, to the tables you need, explanation of magic, spells, so on and so forth. Everything is in here. So all you need is this book and some dice to be able to play it. Now, one thing I can say about this particular system, so if you're here in the USA watching this, just know that RuinQuest, everything is in um, a metric system. So everything is measured in meters, not feet, so on and so forth. So at first, it's a little weird getting used to that because you have to be able to do the conversion to understand when it comes to those changes, particularly with ranged weapons and movement and everything like that. But with very little effort, it's not very hard to do the conversions. And what I do is just make yourself a cheat sheet. So at that point, you can reference back to it into the game and just keep the game flow moving quite quickly. And move on from there. I mean, it's a pretty simple conversion, to be honest with you. One meter equals three feet anyways. So, but getting back to if you do something in the game system you don't like, change it. So that's what I do. I don't like using the meters. I use feet. So there we go. And Ruin Quest is such a, it, it's an excellent one. It's one, I have to admit, if you've never played Ruin Quest, the combat is just so uber cinematic over the top. It is, um, I have to say when it comes to cinematic combat, it's one of the best RPG games I have played hands down for that and the fact that the way that it works and the way that it was designed was well thought out. It just gives you a very different perspective on when you take these RPG systems and you put them together. Particularly you're using D&D &D, which is taking into account that your weapon does this fixed amount of damage from this well, let's say 1d8 plus whatever the modifier is to this and you take that to Ruin Quest who are not only is your weapon going to do that damage but it could possibly at that point immobilize the right arm of your opponent or at that point it could deliver eight points of damage to the abdominal area which may exceed the hit points of that area which could mean within several rounds the opponent dies from blood loss so it adds that level of complexity and cinematic flavor if you will to your solo RPG. If you enjoy that type of gaming, I strongly suggest to check that one out. So moving on, and game systems I find myself, I keep going back to and really enjoying and why I keep going back to them. Now it's no secret that I am a bona fide 100% Middle Earth Lord of the Rings fan. I love Lord of the Rings. I love The Hobbit. I've read the books. I love everything about it. Everything J.R. Tolkien put out there for us to be able to enjoy is just absolutely not only astounding for what it is and the time that it was written, but still today how prevalent it is. And if you just look at pulp culture today and what an impact it's had on it. As a matter of fact, if you look at D&D &D and the representations of elves, the elves of what they used to be in D&D, &D, going back to based off of, I'm going to say more of Irish, Scottish folklore compared to Middle Earth, right? Instead of being these frail, tall, slender creatures, now the elves are a force to be reckoned with. These are seasoned veteran warriors, skilled archers, and well, they're, how do I put this? You don't tread through their territory without some, well, pretty fierce opposition. 
And with that being said, let's get into the game system I find myself coming back to a lot, and I really, really do enjoy it. Now, when this one came out, the One Ring, and I did pick this up. As a matter of fact, I still have everything sealed, and I'm going to explain to you why I did that. Now, I still have all my dice nice and sealed up in the original package, and they have not been removed yet. Matter of fact, they're still all there. Mostly because, the way I looked at it, um, I can always use my six-sided dice instead of putting those in there, but the reason why I had put this back in, the art is beautiful, I really, really do enjoy this game system, but the thing that I have found was that the spine of this book is, well, how do I put this? The construction could have been a whole lot better than what it was. Um, they put a lot of work into the art and the game into the system, which makes it so enjoyable. But when it actually came to the production of the books, it looks like they cheapened out a little bit. And I noticed after the third time of opening this book and going through it at that point, the glue started to let loose and the pages started becoming loose. And it was at that point I said, okay, um, we gotta find a different way. But I don't worry about that. The reason why I don't worry about that, despite getting these wonderful Middle Earth maps that outline the areas of interest within this game system it's one I found this right here adventures in Middle Earth now this is written did come out for the fifth edition but here's the thing about this game system when it comes to D&D D&D really just takes a backseat as a matter of fact looking through this material um, other than the fact that it says, hey, you can use this with 5th edition, um, yeah, that's really where it stops. As a matter of fact, with this game setting, I'm going to say you could take 3rd edition, you could take any edition, any even basic fantasy or the advanced companion or what have you, use it as a mechanic for it, and overlay this over the top of it and still have a very very good RPG system now the reason why I say I find myself coming back to this is well this book holds up much better but the cool thing about it is the company cubicle 7 that manufactured this one is the same one that did this as a matter of fact this is the same game as this the only difference is this one you can use 5th edition they say written for 5th edition or go a little bit further back you could go into 3rd edition if you wanted to and just use the basic d20 character creation and template for this game but the thing I find really cool about it even solo is the fact that Middle Earth role playing or MERP um, I played, got into that. The One Ring, um, which was made by Decipher, which was supposed to be the officially licensed Lord of the Rings RPG game. And that seemed, I looked over it, it just seemed like it was a lot more... There was too much emphasis on, in my opinion, on the character creation and what they did than the game and it kind of left me like eh. it was until I found this system the one ring but this system right here if you want to play a solo adventure or in a group and you want to play in what feels like a true real Lord of the Rings Tolkien Middle Earth fantasy experience I highly recommend you checking this one out now I have picked up other 
game books for this that were expansions upon this because of course in the true Wizards of the Coast way they released this which was the basic rules behind basically the one ring or adventures in middle earth what they call it and then as you progress through the book they released other books that were source material to be used for it but regardless i have found that i have played this several times and every time i play it you really do get the feeling it's the they did such a good job at actually capturing the feeling of Middle Earth and being able to deliver that to the player to be able to experience it. Now, these are my opinions. I That's the way I feel when I play Adventures in Middle Earth. And as a matter of fact, I've sat down when I picked this up and I went through this, all the rule sets of this and looked at it. And I had actually put them side by side with the one ring. And I'll be honest with you, it's the exact same system. The artwork's the same, everything is the same, down to the only difference is this system is using its own dice mechanic for it. Whereas of this system is utilizing a D20 system toward the majority of us already know. So the cool thing I like about this is you already know the D20 system, you have the dice, you know the layout, you know all that. It gives you more time as the solo gamer to be able to immerse yourself into Middle Earth and be able to play that game. So that's the one I find myself going back to when I want to experience some Middle Earth and play some Middle Earth. Now, let me put all this stuff back in the sleeve. It's the last thing I want is the book falling apart on me. So that's my Middle Earth solo experience, what I have found in my game systems I keep going back to. Now, with no surprise, it shouldn't be to any surprise to anybody here. So there are, there is a edition of D&D &D that I really do quite enjoy. I love it. I find myself going back to it a lot. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it. Some people hated it. Some people liked it, but I think the majority of people really did like it. And it's one of it's the addition that I go to when I want to experiment and I want to create my own RPG system. And I kind of want to add in my own elements and mix in different games and stuff like that. I find it the most well written addition to do this in. And that addition, of course, is the third edition of. Dungeons and Dragons. But with that being said, the game particularly that I really like to play that's based in first edition, basic D&D, but is actually used in the third edition format and plays extremely well. It's a modernized version of basic edition is like what I like to say. It's a great game. I find myself coming back to it quite often. And I have over the years, and it's one of those that, um, it's one of my top ten games, and that would be Castles and Crusades. Now, Castles and Crusades is a, like I said, it's an excellent game. It's set up in third edition, the D20, so you're already familiar with the way that a D20 system works. Everything is pretty basic pretty straightforward when honestly and if you're familiar with the older editions of D, &D particularly basic D, D well you're in my opinion you're just melding the best of both worlds and you're creating this castles and crusades now with that being in, in mind 
it works extremely well believe it or not and like I said with this right here I have found that using the third edition mechanic with that makes for a very interesting and great solo token experience but castles and crusades on its own is an excellent excellent game system for the solo rpg player and it's one out there that i'm just going to put the one second let me take it so one thing that we have seen recently particularly with D D, and for whatever reason the people at wizards of the coast felt as if they had to bring identity politics and these other things into the game system which in my opinion didn't need to be there it was just ridiculous why they did that but they did it so a lot of people that i know of that i have i talked to have just basically said done that's it they're done they, they no longer touch D D. but the alternative to that is if you wanted to you know get to the real meat and potatoes of what D D is supposed to be the world of D D, not the world of pay to play but be restricted on certain rules or what you can do with certain classes or and all of that stuff castles and crusades is the way to go you ain't gonna find any of that in castles and crusades what you are gonna find in castles and crusades is an excellent system it's made the way that it was intended to be made by the creator of it one of the campaign settings that Castle Zig, which is this right here, this is an excellent campaign system. But if you know your history behind D&D and who the creator was, you'll see why this is such a great, great campaign setting and the ideas put into it and the reason why it is what it is. And the fact is, you need not look any further than the person who, well, put the pen to paper. So, yeah, Castles and Crusades, if you're looking to get back to what good old school gaming is supposed to be, the way it was intended to be, and you're looking for something you can still get today that's not out of print, that's still readily accessible, here it is and it's right there it's just you're not hearing a whole lot about it for the fact that well i don't they don't have the backing of hasbro to be able to put all this marketing out there so last but not least in the game that i have found myself coming back to quite a bit and really 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 enjoying and man when i say enjoy i mean the game really really it puts a smile on my face thinking about it keep dropping stuff of D, &D and you're looking for a modern in print old school gaming the way it was meant to be to bring to your table everything you need is there in it the only thing you need are to bring to the table are the dice and your minis and a little bit of imagination that game is this right here forbidden lands forbidden lands by far is just an excellent excellent game system regardless if you're playing in a large group or you're playing solo the way it was designed is to be played cooperatively but the wealth of information that it gives you the way that it's set up for your character creation the story background to dungeon generators to town generators village generators castle dungeon 
<laughs> and generators and so on is just an excellent system to be played solo and I've had oh man I've had a lot of fun with this as a matter of fact I'm still currently playing Forbidden Lands my map is still up on the wall with my markers on it this to where my characters are at um, and I have two game systems currently that I am playing right now Forbidden Lands is one and the second one is when I get into my Castles and Crusades and my Raven Loft setting so there you have it folks I hope maybe that sheds some light um, out there and gave you some food for thought maybe some systems that uh, you know you maybe haven't heard of yet maybe you're new into solo RPG like I said and maybe you've never experienced anything beyond D&D &D, but just know there is a wealth of different game systems out there that you can get that well you pay one price get one book sit down and play it enjoy it and get hours of fun out of it and all you need is that one book and you don't need well you know four or five hundred dollars worth of add-on stuff to play the game not that you have to do that but really the way this stuff is marketed it's the way that they do it and well for me I want the gaming experience I want old I'm finding old school gaming the way that it was meant to be is the best way and particularly if you're playing solo it's the best way all right my friends I hope you enjoyed this video the next one I do um, I'm going to start my castles and crusades and get into that and start playing that system and um, recording that and getting it up and out there and I hope you enjoyed it if you liked the video please click the like button and if you haven't subscribed click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon when I upload a video you get a notification so you don't miss one okay my friends this is Artichoke Dip signing off